Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome to um, MG Tech Fest, the first ever technology and digital conversations that Media General is bringing to you. I mean, we are very excited for this event today because we have amazing people here to come and give us education on um, how secure we are in Ghana and how our cyber networks and everything is functioning. You know, the internet is in vogue and everybody is on there doing things. Recently, one of my bosses called me up and he said he just realized that every playlist that he creates on YouTube is when you Google his name, the playlist pops up. And if he had done anything malicious or anything bad on there, people would have been able to use that against him. That means that all our information and everything is sitting there on the internet. But how can you protect yourself from this enormous um, amount of data that is being put out there in the world now, which is the reason why we decided to have this um, event on cybersecurity in Ghana and how one can stay safe. And so we are excited having you here today. Um, I have some big people from um, Media General here. I have um, Mr. Abraham Kwatin, who is the head of news. Abraham Asari, who is the head of news here, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and I have my boss, Mr. Francis Doku, um, who is also here. Thank you, boss, for coming. <laughs> and I have Mr. Winfred Afu also here, who is head of shared services here with us. Sir. Thank you very much for coming. And I have Mr. Henry Nidote, um, who is head of digital um, news. Thank you, sir, for, you to, for being here. Um, so we, before we get into um, the main conversations for today, um, let me first of all introduce my guests here, and then we can uh, move on from there. So I have Ifia. My best friend, um, Ifia, <laughs> Ifia Dako, who is from the National Cybersecurity Center. Um, she is the manager for, um, uh, yeah, she, she's the manager for capacity building and awareness, right? Thank you very much. And I have um, Pratap Jantua, who is an ethical hacker. I think he's one of the, he's a guy that you would fall in love with because after the stuff that he tells you, <laughs> you fall in love with him. And I have um, Victor Gordon Yamadi here. He's head of um, cybersecurity solutions at Vodafone Ghana. Thank you very much, guys, for coming. Can we give them a round of applause for being here? Right. And so before we get into it, we want to um, take a word from the GM for MG Digital, Mr. Francis Doku. A round of applause for him as he's coming. Thank you so much, uh, Kwame, and thank you all for coming. Um, the reason why we're gathered here today is to have what we call uh, technological conversations. Uh, TechFest has been established. We've thought about how do we have conversations about things happening in the technology space. Um, we know, for example, that we live in time we call the Internet of Things, which is that everything that you have, every single item you have, can be linked to the internet. Uh, we also live in a space where everything we do is kind of uh, directed by the internet. What videos do we watch? Um, what songs do we play? Most of these will get off the internet. And we understand that we live in a space where the internet influences our life. Therefore, it's important to understand the space so that we will know very well how to function properly. So we decided to have these conversations. And when I said we, I mean that uh, MG Digital, which is a subsidiary business within the Media General Group. And as you know, Media General is encompasses a lot of media um, organizations. We have TV3, we have uh, 3FM, we have Unia FM, we have Akuma FM in uh, Kumasi, and then we have Connect FM in Takradi. We also very soon will be launching another television station called Unia TV. So watch out for that. in just a few days time. So our business is to look at, I mean, MG Digital's business is to look at how we can properly leverage the, the internet, mobile technology and everything um, so that we can push our business uh, forward. So we felt that if we can do that, then we need to you know, bring experts together and have conversations around things that would impact our business and impact our life as people who live in a technological world. So. Together, we thought that our first conversation should be cyber on cybersecurity because um, it has 
it has a uh, potential of you know uh, looking at how we would function properly in the internet space how exposed are we as uh, people how exposed are we as uh, companies people are willing to steal our identity and to some extent even steal our money uh, of the internet so if we understand it properly then would we'll know how to function also properly so um, we thought of bringing together experts in the field who know these things so they would talk to us and then they would educate us and then we'll know more about these things than we know and so this is a dialogue as we call it it's not a lecture it's a dialogue so Kwame uh, Uswansa uh, and then the team that is here would have a conversation and we're all invited to share our thoughts as well uh, as we go on so we are live on TV, on TV3 as we speak now. We are live on radio, on uh, 3FM on, uh, in Accra. We are live on Connect FM in Takradi. And we are also live on social media. And the hashtag, if you want to follow this conversation, is MG Tech Fest. So follow us and let's have this conversation. Thank you for coming. And we hope that at the end of this, we'll have learned a lot. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, my, my Mr. Francis Doku, for that nice um speech out there. So you can join us, join the conversation with the hashtag MGTechFest. If you have any question, you can tweet at us and we can, we will be asking um, the, the, the speakers as and when the program is going on. But we want to get into our first um, presentation. And this is particularly about, this is particularly about Ghana and what Ghana is doing about cybersecurity. So recently I read an article online that Israel wants to build their own internet. They don't want to be a part of the global network because they want to feel safer for themselves. And so it got me thinking that what is Ghana doing? And um, somewhere last year I read um, somewhere that there was a cyber war that was happening in the dark web. And so a lot of people were hacked. A friend of mine actually in Ghana was hacked. And in 2017, we, we saw that the um, stock exchange website, NC, um, xe.com, was also hatched, um, hacked at, at a point in time. So we want to see how Ghana is building systems that would keep us safe and our information safe, our human beings, how are we protecting ourselves on here. So we would get um, Ifia Dako Asante to give us a talk on that. Can we put our hands together for Ifia as she gives us? Thank you very much, Kwame. Right. Um, as the um, earlier speakers have already said it was supposed to be a dialogue, but right. my earlier um, communication got to me to be a speech. So <laughs> I'll try and make it a little bit interactive. Right. So um, I'm actually very happy to be here. We actually, um, we have, I'm from the National Cybersecurity Center, as you already, already indicated. It's a very young um, institution. So we are now actually gathering up our arms or wings to actually encompass or bring everybody on board. So I'll start with a simple question of what do you know, what do you um, understand by cyber? We are going too much ahead. So let's try and come <laughs> back and say, what is cyber? What do we know cyber is? Why are you operating and as you call or you do SMS or WhatsApp, what do you mean by cyber? Cyber are new things that make them things possible by spread of computers and their networks, such as the internet that we are using. Today, we are able to do mobile money services, online shopping, government e-services, such, such as the passports, birth certificates, and on the like. And then a vast, a vast majority of Ghanaians use mobile money for most of their transactions, sending money to your family members and friends. So we, um, we also use social media, um, social media platform to communicate with our family too and friends without actually going and walking to them as we traditionally used to. And then, so why is government also interested in um, cybersecurity or cybersecurity as a whole? We recognize that with recent reports that instant, a number of internet users and people with access to technology in Ghana has increased from 7.9 million users in 2017 to 10.32 million users in 2019, which means that our, our Ghanaians are very active on social media. And Ghana is also ranked the ninth country globally, which is active on social media, with um, countries like Philippines, okay. Singapore, and the like. So government saw the need that there is supposed to be a digitization avenue, which is helping developing opportunities, there is half development opportunities to offer a better future. And we also recognize the same, uh, crime committed alongside with the use of computer system. But um, government seeing this, 
um, sought to know that we also have to protect our people from from the use from the being protected from being the use of um, cyber security or cyberspace. So we want to define what cyber security in this um, sp um, in this space means. So it means that according to the International Telecommunication Union, which Ghana is a member, cyber security is a collection of tools, policy, security concepts, best practices that is used to protect the cyber environment. Cyber is ensuring com um, confidentiality, integrity, privacy of cyber system related to system and assets. It's in protecting the citizenry that the Ministry of Communication, which is our sector ministry, has since 2017 prioritized cyber security. The Ministry of Communication commissioned a cyber security capacity builder or maturity study conducted by the Global Cyber Security Capacity Center of the University of Oxford. The study puts Ghana's cyber security maturity level at the formative stage based on the cyber security maturity model, which means Ghana has some cyber security features which have been formulated but may be ad hoc, disorganized, poorly defined, or simply new. The government of Ghana, in recognizing our low ranking from the finding, decided to commit to a number of initiatives, which include the adoption of the National Cyber Security Institutional Framework, the formation of the National Cyber Security Inter-Ministerial Advisory Council, and the National Cyber Security Technical Working Group. The Inter-Ministerial Advisory Council, Council is a body of governance institution with oversight responsibility on policy and ensuring implementation of policy across the various ministries and sectors. The Technical Working Group is a body of experts from relevant institutions such as the Ghana Armed Forces, the Data Protection Commission, the National Communication Authority, Judicial Service, the Criminal Investigative Department, among others, whose operation borders on cyber security and who help in the operations of the National Cyber Security Center. They also have been the establishment of the National Cyber Security Center, the newly or the young institution, to oversee and coordinate national cyber security programs, amongst other initiatives, in partnership with local, st local stakeholders and international partners to raise cyber security awareness in the fight against cyber crime. Since the establishment of the center, there has been a number of initiatives, one of which is the awareness program, the annually celebrated awareness program which is to synthesize, synthesize or original, synthesize um, Ghanaians or the public on cyber security and cyber crime events. The workshop was organized, the first of which was organized in 33 senior high schools with about 7,000 students participating. The team was impressed with the interest shown by the students and the level of questioning and genuine knowledge seeking from all the participants. The other event that we organized was a celebration of the Safer Internet Day. This is a globally celebrated day. This was to seek um, and raise awareness of emerging online issues. This year's theme was Together for a Better Internet, and it was a call for action to all um, stakeholders to join together and play their role in creating a better internet for everybody, especially for the young um, users. This was organized in Laboni. We had an interactive sh section with the students where they um, perform or organize a, um, a stage play indicating how they understand cyber security to their level. So there's a stage play where they actually had a laptop and they had students actually or hackers acting like, um, students acting like hackers to their laptop and how they were supposed to protect themselves. So wanted them to, wanted to get the understanding of what they understand by cyber security and what they, does it mean to be securing yourself from I mean, any attacker to the basic conflict, or we need to let them understand it so that, so that when they are talking about cyber security, it's not too of an, a cumbersome technology or terminology to them. And also, we also did, uh, we also established the national communication sets. This is also to serve the telecommunication ecosystem. And we also have a SOC or security operations center for the Bank of Ghana to serve the financial institution. If, I don't know if you also heard about the establishment or the, um, the release of the cyber security initiative or directive that was released during the awareness month. Mm. And then the NITA is also um, establishing or creating their own cyber security um, SOC or security operations center in their institution to protect the e-governance architecture and to est um, est expect to address some security issues affecting our MDAs. Okay. So Ghana, with the international cooperation or partnership, has also implemented or is implementing the um, Convention on Cybercrime, which is the Budapest Convention. And then we are also working, um, or we are also ratified to the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity, 
personal and personal data protection. We are Ghana is the fifth African country to be signed on to the Convention on Cybercrime. And then we are the third country on the continent to be signed up to the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity and um, Personal Data. So I also want to um, iterate some of the goals that the center has set up to do and what, um, and then I'll give you a status of what we've done so far. So we also want to, with the, what would have, um, there are five goals that um, the Ministry of Communication through the National Cyber Security Center has set us to achieve. We want to develop an independent, sustainable, multi-stakeholder institutional framework for Ghana cybersecurity based on existing institutional arrangements and international benchmark. We also want to develop um, our national cybersecurity capabilities to protect our criminal uh, critical information infrastructure and to respond to both existing and emerging cyber threats. We also want to support national institutions with a mandate on cybercrime and cybersecurity to develop their cybercrime response capability consistent with their mandate. And also to develop and strengthen cybersecurity op operations and partnership at all levels. And we want to also, they are most importantly, to develop a cybersecurity culture amongst the children, businesses, public, and the government. In, in or we are actually working on, in, in house, we are working on the National Cybersecurity Policy and Strategy Documents. I think this is one of the main um, policy that we're actually coming up with. is to secure digital infrastructure and then deter cyber criminals, develop national capacity, and strengthen um, cybersecurity cooperation with our international partners. This is also to build a resilient digital ecosystem. Ghana has formed a lot of international cooperation with Council of Europe and SGI. Currently, SGI is helping the center develop its sets. So we have an internal um, set GH, Computer Emergency Re Response Team. That actually, we are building their capacity to able to respond to incidents that are reported to us. We are supposed to also co um, coordinate with other institutions like CID, BNI, in case an incident comes and we are not capable of actually handling it. We are supposed to relay it to those institutions. And finally, I also want to make aware to the public of the um, uh, always October, I mean, always, we always celebrate an October celebration of National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. This year, our theme is to demonstrate what, what we've actually spoken about last year um, on the cybersecurity, how Ghana is ready to handle cybersecurity. So I think in a nutshell, this is what um, Ghana is doing on the cybersecurity level. That's great. A round of applause for him. <laughs> Okay, so um, after everything Ifia has told us, she's told us what government has put in the backbone um, to make sure Ghana would stay safe. A lot of policies, a lot of education things um, going on. But we, before we go on um, with the show, we want to go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, the MG Tech Fest continues. See you soon. So you're welcome back um, to MG Tech Fest um, as it is happening. So we've had Ifia talk to us about what government is doing um, on the cyber security side to get us Ghanaians safe. But all of us use mobile phones. I bet you have a lot of phones in this room right now. <laughs> How, what network are you using? And what, are the, what is the MNO that you are on doing to protect you, your data? How are they protecting your data? Because right now, they are all selling data packages. Everybody they are encouraging us to put a lot of our information out there. You know, now you get free Facebook, free Twitter, free Snapchat, free Instagram, and everything. So now we are all dumping things about ourselves onto the internet. But what are the MNOs doing to keep us safe? So to talk about what telecoms are doing to keep us safe, we have Victor Gordon Yamadi. And like I said before, he is the Cyber Security Solutions Manager at Vodafone, and he would do justice to that. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> so V, your, your audience. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So we heard a fear trying to explain what Saba is all about. Uh, probably what we didn't hear is what is Saba attack. I always try to break it down so that uh, those of us who are not into the subject matter, uh, matter aspect, as far as uh, the whole issue of cyber security is concerned, uh, so that you appreciate the subject better. Uh, so um, reading when we were growing, we were told attack could come from the sea, from the land, 
from the air, the space, water. But one of the attacks that we cannot control, that is borderless, is cyber. What it means is that the person will not move into your jurisdiction physically, but he, he, will be, he or she will be able to take over that uh, space. Cyber attackers are now shifting their focus to telecom organizations. This is largely because telecom, telecommunication companies build, control, and operate critical communication infrastructure for nations and business in general. Such infrastructure hosts large sensitive customer data, making the sector a large, making the sector a target by those wishing to subvert or exploit critical infrastructure for their own interests. We heard about critical infra infrastructures, and in Ghana, there, were, there are about 10 critical infra 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 infrastructures that were identified. Among them are telecommunications, um, information communication, water, uh, health sector, defense uh, services, et cetera, et cetera. And so if you are talking about critical infrastructure, uh, you should begin to look at some of these things. Some of them are life impacting. And that is why probably we need to appreciate that, uh, the subject. And in all of the critical infrastructure identified, um, for you to drive the cyber attack effectively, the fundamental infrastructure that is, uh, you know, on which all of these other infrastructures are running probably is the telecommunication uh, infrastructure. And so if you heard about the Internet of Things, and you heard about even industrial internet of things. All that we are talking about is that uh, some of these things are using technology that are driven by telecommunication. And to a large extent, mobile uh, telecommunication infrastructure. The sector is appealing for new entrants because of insatiable appetite of customers for internet and mobile services. This leads to operators offering services using convergence of circuit switch and packet-based internet protocols, uh, protocol infrastructure that continue to broaden the attacking surface, leaving telecom infrastructure open to deliberate and malicious disruption from cyber attacks. Continually, government agencies are attacking telecom infrastructure and applications to establish surveillance. Thus, the threat landscape will continue to grow exponentially. The result of such attacks are a breach of privacy and huge financial loss, among other others such as death. Of late, a lot of people are showing interest in cellular network radio interface encryption as the cyber attacks are increasing mostly owing to weak network encryption configurations. Insecure configuration at customer premises, little awareness about the telecom threat by end users, little or non existence of legislation in some countries, little or no cooperation among nations are some of the contributing factors. According to positive technologies, 22% of attack victims in the last quarter of 2018 were individuals being the highest statistics. During the same period, 55% of the attacks were targeted at infrastructure, with 11% targeted at mobile devices and Internet of Things. Since 2007, the media have carried out stories on presentations and demonstration of voice SMS and data accretion weaknesses, as well as charging vulnerabilities at various security conferences. Tools are now freely available to intercept with encryption communication using low cost modified mobile devices. While there are GSM interception devices tailored for law enforcement agencies, such devices are available to wider range to a wider range of users at very low cost. The current strong network encryption algorithm, and those of you who are a bit technical, is a A5 slash 3. 
I can assure you that that has also been subjected to attack, and so it is no more secure as we talk about. Very soon, we'll hear of uh, A5-4, which is one of the encryption required in the, as far as the radio interface is concerned. The threats, the current strong network encryption, um, A5 as a, A5 slash 3 as I've mentioned already, has become weak. That is, the 64 bit key making it vulnerable to a cracking, as the 64 bit keys are within reach of some crackers, including state sponsors' attacks. The threat of eavesdropping, interception, impersonation, and tracking are still available in telcos, especially in the European, Middle East, and Africa, the MR region. To maintain security and customer confidence with respect to privacy and safety, operators need to take concrete steps in addressing weak configuration of network elements. What we should know is that telecom infrastructure continue to grow based on the legacy infrastructure that was started with. Today, as we speak, the GSM network, the 2G that you guys are familiar of, the 3G, the 4G, they are still you know, uh, uh, running on the legacy uh, infrastructure of being 2G. And that is where the problem is. With over 5 billion customer base operating online, strong network security must be, must be a business for network operators to reduce or minimize high and far-reaching impact of an attack through advanced persistent threats or other attack vectors that stayed on the network undetected or detected very late. To achieve the common objective of privacy and online safety, various network operators use different corporate cultures, business objectives, and processes. And so when one, one network may be relying on an, uh, one vendor to provide the kind of security or infrastructure that the, the operator will rely on. Another operator may be relying on another, on, on another vendor. What this means is that even though they are all working towards a common goal of achieving security, probably it will take a longer time for one research, uh, uh, how do you call it, vendor to reach where we want to. And so these are some of the challenges. Good configuration of encryption and integration protection in the network as well as authentication and key agreement uh, algorithms and re-authentication frequency will mitigate such threats. Also, traffic data at rest should be encrypted. Now, as you see here, if you do any activity on your phone, it is expected by the network uh, operator to change your location. In other words, there is what we call the temporal uh, imaging identification. What that normally, uh, what, what, what it normally does is, at one point, what it will be showing will be different from what it will be showing the next time based on the number of activities that you are doing over a period. Some, as a result of resource constraint, may increase their time. And so they might say that, okay, when you do maybe 10 or more activity, then your location address uh, in a layman term will change. Thus, thus, while some operators in MR region engage third parties to provide assurance of their network through network security tests, others show little concern to address privacy and safety. Disgruntled insiders and other insiders with personal interests may tamper with network configuration that are relatively strong. The effect is low national overall network security score. According to GSM security map, Ghana has an average score with respect to general protection of mobile services relative to a benchmark network. In Ghana today, operators in addressing unauthorized interception or eavesdropping, impersonation, tracking of user traffic and sensitive signal information have made about 80% efforts. So, so far in Ghana, subject to the statistics available, that is GSM map, we have achieved about 80%. What this means is that it is possible for your privacy to be breached. 
Many, so the question is, how can a telco balance the right of customers to remain connected with their vulnerable devices and privacy and safety? We are talking about security, security. Some of the devices on the network do not support encryption. So today, if you really want to enforce total encryption, what happens to such users? It's a question that we need to answer. Many boardrooms of telco organization with a high revenue target and in competitive environments such as Ghana will prefer maximizing revenue by allowing more customers to attach to their network to deny handset or user equipment that do not support encryption, thereby achieving privacy and safety online. Also, where user equipment support strong encryption, voice and SMS traffic are often offloaded to vulnerable DSM network. You may be running on 3G, but immediately you begin to do your SMS, or you want to take a voice call, you come back to the vulnerable, uh, how do you call it, 2G. And so if the, the, the increasing around that environment is not strong, what this means is that you are exposed, or in other words, your privacy cannot be guaranteed. Does most operators make both the weak and strong algorithm available on their networks to support all handsets resulting in privacy breach and not achieving the expected safety in some instances? To the regulator, would the regulator <laughs> relax a bit on network quality KPIs to enable telco operators enforce privacy metrics or KPI? In other words, some of the quality tests that are conducted by the operator, uh, the, the regulator, if you begin to enforce some of the increasing algorithm, what it means is that you will need extra few seconds to establish maybe a call. Now, if the regulator is saying that you need to probably uh, terminate a call by say 20 seconds or milliseconds or whatever that parameter is, and you ended up enabling some of these metrics, impacting quality, the regulator will fine you. And so uh, the operators, in an attempt to probably comply with some of these measures, may not enforce some of this encryption. In Ghana, the regulator provides assurance for network service quality by testing various parameters that address network quality. Similarly, the regulator must be able to assure the citizenry of privacy of subscribers of operators by measuring the parameters required to address safety and privacy on the network if Data Protection Commission is technically not uh, uh, capable. They can you know, uh, collaborate. But I strongly believe that the testing of some of these parameters should sit with the Network Communication Authority. Ghana, among other nations, have good legislation on data protection as well as electronic communication. The operators are required to ensure privacy and secrecy in electronic communication. Last year, Ghana signed the Budapest Convention as mentioned by our, our sister Afria. And we expect ratification very soon. What this will mean is that, for instance, if a crime is committed in, say, Ghana, but the perpetrator is coming from, say, um, let me just see our neighbors, uh, Nigeria, or Liberia, or the attack actually originated is from, say, Liberia to Ghana, but the main you know, victim is from, say, Nigeria. If we all sign up to the Budapest Convention, these three states, it's most likely that the perpetrator will be arrested. What it means is that there will be total cooperation from these three nations leading to the final attacker. What probably the attacker might do is that, you know, the SMEs, they don't have 
the, 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 the necessary capacity to hold the, the, the data that is required uh, you know, over a period. For instance, if I'm not mistaken, the law say we should hold data for, if not six years or seven years, seven years, okay. The question is how many SMEs can you know, build storage to hold this data? It's not possible. So sometimes what they do is that they move the traffic within areas that they believe that they cannot be tracked over a period. And so, yes, probably in a big giant taco operator who will be able to keep the data, when you get to, say, an SME, that will not be able to get, uh, get the relevant information or evidence uh, to continue with the backtracking or tracking of this victim, uh, sorry, the, the attacker, what will happen is that the attacker will get lost in the middle. And so we still have issue as far as the SMEs and other individuals are concerned. I have another question for the state. Will states support the move to achieve privacy and security through telecommunications as this list to less or no surveillance that is lawful interception. If we are able to continuously increase encryption, there is also the other side of it, being the inability of the state probably to carry out the necessary surveillance. Is the state in position to say, go ahead? Remember, already the bad guys, when they know there is vulnerability on your network, if their privacy cannot be guaranteed, they use other software which are secure. Take, for instance, the iMessage from, um, uh, how do you call it, Apple, right? Or iPhone or whatever. They would rather use those services rather than relying on the mainstream traditional services like, say, SMS, etc. Globally, there should be consensus effort to stop production of handsets that do not support encryption, and the relevant authorities should ensure such handsets do not find their way into our market. There is no way you will know that the, uh, the device you are using does not support encryption, no. It can only be regulated by how it comes into the market or how you brought those devices into this country and other countries. And so if you really want to uh, minimize the risk in the telco environment, one of the areas that need focus is the handset production, the mobile phones that you are using. As my sister said, and I'm happy to hear that, now there is tailored awareness. Going to the schools to talk to them about cyber security or whatever it is within that space, I believe the language will not be too technical, like attackers, surveillance, what, what, what. No, I believe they will speak or use the language that they will appreciate. And that is where we have to get to. All these things that we are saying here, I, I doubt how many of us will appreciate it. But if you begin to go into the environment where we know how the people you know, will appreciate the subject, then we are saying that we are getting to a level as far as maturity with respect to awareness is concerned. And so we shouldn't sit in a corner, bring the intellectuals, bring the, those who are the policy makers, and think that we are doing ourselves good. No. We should go to the vulnerables. Remember, as he, she said, the attackers will always look for the weakest link. And who are the weakest link? They are people, for instance, who cannot read and write. They are people who will hardly be able to you know, decipher whether there is, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 you know, something bad at the end of the day. So we need to actually tailor our awareness. That is the only way we can address the subject effectively. I just want us to look at some of the few things that as users, end users, we should be doing. Can you help me with the project? Uh, OK. So it 
If you are not using voicemail, please deactivate it. If you are not using it, just deactivate it. One of the things that attackers are using these days is to exploit your WhatsApp. If, for instance, your, uh, your voicemail is set up with a default password, they are capable of retrieving this. So what they will do is that, you know WhatsApp needs to send you a code to authenticate. So all that they will do is probably, you know, at off-peak hour, when they believe probably you are not by your handset or something like that, they will send, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they will try to use your number to connect to WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp will try over several times. If it's not able to, what it will do is to send voicemail or voice, uh, how do you call it, uh, message. As you are asleep, and because they can retrieve this, they will retrieve it. And the next thing you will realize is that your number, those who are close to you, might think that you were the one probably sending, uh, you know, certain acts. Oh, Charlie. I am in a corner, I cannot buy credit. Can you send me 20 CD credit? Oh, I need to pay this guy so so and so. Uh, can you help me? I mean, all kinds of things. By the time you realize, it might be too late. If you are not interested in a number again, remember that your number may be attached to so many you know, online services, maybe your bank, some other services that you might have subscribed to. Please make sure, first of all, go back and change probably the number to the new one that you want to use before you finally go through what we call the same number recycling or whatever. Remember, once you stop using your SIM for about three months or so, the SIM is available for another person. And the worst thing is that some of the, you know, life cycle management of customers are not, you know, complete. What will happen is that there may be some, you know, systems that your number is still attached to. And so, even though the wrong person is using it, the new person is using it, it might be pointing to the old user. And you can imagine what may happen. Especially if investigations should come in, or uh, people like the police or the whoever who are responsible for the investigation are, are coming in. It might be pointed to you. It will take a great effort or quality investigation for you to be exonerated. When you receive a call, and usually we say echo, and you are hearing your own voice, I encourage you to run away from that line. <laughs> yes, it could be the man in the middle attack. It could be that the line has been intercepted by somebody else. Usually, in offloading, probably your call from um, the the offloading is not done pro properly, and so the one that carried the the speed, I mean that had the the, the more speed, like the 3G, will continue to hold some of the talk. And then the 2G is also holding some of the thoughts. So you begin to hear yourself. But to be safe, I would rather encourage you, if you can leave that line, just leave it. The Internet of Things, the industrial Internet of Things, all the things that you can reach over the network, research shows that usually, it is as a result of wrong configuration. So for instance, you follow the manual, and then for every device, there is always be a, a, a documented default password. So you finish the configuration, and everything is OK, so you are happy. The next moment, you realize that you have been attacked. Usually, attackers who will attack you when they identify some of these things, they will wait until they are able to make the maximum impact. So for instance, again, there is evidence that during a long uh, break, like we had for Easter, beginning from um, late hours of, of Thursday, running through Friday, 
Monday and early hours of uh, Saturday. If, for instance, you have a vulnerability available that can be exploited leading to what we call international uh, revenue share or whatever, they will wait until the strike. Imagine your phone is making calls for this number of periods. Talk about the cost and then the impact on your uh, 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 company. And so if you are sure that you are not going to use the service over the period, these things, once you are sure you are not going to use it, shut it down. If you, are not, if you know that for the four days or so that uh, these services uh, or that you're going to be away from office, shut it down. If, for instance, there is no need for business continuity or some other things, just shut it down and you'll be free. So it is better to always call for the expert to help you with the configuration. And once in a while, you can you know, call on them to help you to validate whether the configurations are OK or not. Uh, some of these things will be, will be done through penetration tests, et cetera, et cetera, where people like uh, Patrick are probably relevant. In case you want to hand over your device to somebody, you are using a phone, and then you are blessed by another one, which is probably more powerful. What we normally do, oh, sister, you take this one. We don't normally take our time to wipe off the data on the device. Simple thing that you should do is go through the settings, resets. Everything will go. So it is important before we let go our devices, we, uh, we, 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 we reset them. Sometimes we are moving around. Yes, sometimes it's as a result of the fact that you want to probably reach a particular destination um, as a result of location addresses and those other things. Please, if you know that you are not going to use or you are not using location address at the moment, just put it off. You can be traced to wherever you are or the attacker could know wherever you are located. And so if you are going to the right and he knows that he can strike from the left, he can then strike. So please let us know when to put on our location services when it matters most. Please be economical in disclosing your information. Sometimes you meet a friend or in a group like this, then you start talking, oh, Charlie, I have 10,000 Ghana City in my account. Oh, Charlie, this, that, I mean the fancy thing about yourself. You are just inviting attackers. They will just begin to track you based on your, the, the information that you put at, across. If you can just slow down in what you say to a friend, to families, especially to people that you don't know, you are helping yourself a lot. Our children are very important to us. Actually, they are the most vulnerable when you look at the whole ecosystem as far as the cyber security is concerned. I will encourage all telcos to kind of provide what we call uh, parental control, where you are able to direct what your children read on the internet or from, from your mobile, uh, you know, uh, 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 the mobile devices that they are using, etc. Most of us, what we do is buy a phone, put chip inside, hand it over to them, and then, hey, they are on their own. Another thing that is very, very critical is, as parents, we enjoy showing our pictures uh, you know, in social media. The, the child is doing something nice. Like you take the picture on social media. He attained this age. You are celebrating birthday. You take the picture. You put it there. Oh, the uncle came, maybe donated something or gave something nice. You take the picture on the social media. All these things could be tracked. By the time the boy is probably at 18 or so, where probably he wants to run the internet himself, if any, every information about him is there. So if an attacker sat in and say, oh, guy, oh, you know your uncle so and so, together we came that time. I was the one who took the picture. Oh, this, that, that, that. And all this information are there. What do you think will happen? You become vulnerable and you can easily be attacked in any form. I will encourage us to report 
every suspicious activity around our mobile devices. This is very, very important. Sometimes at Ghanaian, we always say, oh, Fama Nyami. Please, the more we report, fine, you might be a victim today, but that could be a saving moment for another person. Because the story around the whole thing has been read by somebody else. And so if he's being tricked in the same manner, he will be able to, you know, I mean, find a way of withdrawing. So it is important that any time, you know, anything happens to us, let, let's report it. Let's go to the police. Let's go to the, uh, the right body. Sometimes you go to an operator for help. He, he, the operator might tell you that, I, I'm sorry, there is nothing that we can do. In some instances, I can assure you that there is something that they can do. The regulator is there. Just engage the regulator appropriately. And before you realize, at least you'll be satisfied to extend. So please, let's encourage reporting. On this note, I will stop, uh, pause, and ask my other colleagues to continue. Thank you very much. A round of applause for him. I think Victor has given us a lot of insights when it comes to how we use our mobile devices and how we put our information out there on the networks. Um, but, V, let me, let me ask you a quick question. You, so, for instance, on Vodafone, right? So, Vodafone Cash. If you get somebody to call your call center, and, for instance, I lose my, uh, I want to change my PIN, right? So, I call your call center, and I tell them that I give them information about me, that I want to change my PIN. Meanwhile, it's not me, it's not my PIN necessarily I want to change. I want to change maybe your PIN. How sure... Or how, how well trained are your customer service guys that they would be able to detect that this person, that would, for, if I call first of all and they're able to make me out, I will drop the call and I'll call again. It would go to another person and that person may not be the same person I spoke to before. And if that, also, that person also makes me out, I would call an, again and I may be giving to a different person. So I would try till I'm able to make it through somebody who is a bit vulnerable and would be able to give me access to change somebody else's pin that I'm pretending to be me. What are the telcos doing on that side? Make sure that user, user data or user information are secure. OK, before I answer that, I want to say that I am here as an expert in the industry. Right. I have not been officially mandated to talk on some of these issues. Right. But because I am familiar with the procedure or the process, I will speak to it. Right. So for every agent that comes to the call center, there is what we call a process on some of these things. And so, um, yes, it is possible that somebody can get vulnerable along the line. Mm -hmm. But the requirement, and it's not even everybody, that piece call with respect to, to mobile money. Our mobile money infrastructure is, you know, a, a side that the people probably who are doing other things, who have become uh, uh, experts to an extent, mm -hmm. or who are familiar with the issues, are, some of, are, are those that are probably migrated to do or to handle some of these mobile uh, money-related uh, issues. The process requires that you be taken through what we call know your customer. And there, there is a score. If you don't meet the minimum score, they cannot help you. No matter how you cry or what, what, what. They cannot help you. So this is what um, you know, uh, Vodafone you know, has in place with okay. respect to uh, pink you know, changes. Or even uh, because you mentioned something about pin, uh, right. closely related is also swap. Right. Swap, you can't just call online and say you want to swap. You cannot. You need to walk in and to be identified. OK? okay? So the issue around my phone has been probably, uh, my number has been taken by, an, or is being used by another person. Usually it could be some of the vulnerable side that you have been. Maybe as we sit here, a vulnerable Wi-Fi is set up. And you think that it's so you know, free, let me just use it. Some of these will not have encryption in place. In other words, you are not protected with respect to the traffic that you are passing. Along the line, you say, well, let me check my email. You put in your email address, they capture it. 
you put in your password, they catch you. The next thing, they are able to go into your inbox. Hmm. The only alert you might get, even that one, I wonder how, how many of us really check some of these alerts. So if you are logging in with a different device, your email service provider will alert you. We have detected right. that this new device has connected, mm -hmm. confirmed. Some of us, we don't read some of these things before we realize everything is done against us. So let's be watchful as far as our devices in our hands are concerned. And that way we will stay a bit safer. Thank you very much, Victor. So a round of applause for him. I think. So we are still on the MD Tech Fest, and we want to get a little bit practical, OK? Um, to know some of the attacks that come at us as regular end users of devices. I mean, like I said before, we are putting ourselves out there. And there's a lot of information, a lot of data statistics that I may um, talk through later um, in, in, in the conversation. But I have Pratap here. And Pratap is an ethical hacker, like I said before. Pratap, because he knows how to penetrate systems, he would be able to take us through how people are coming at us. But before he speaks, we want to go for a quick break. Now, when we come back, we would get Pratap, show us and demonstrate how we can be safe and how we can get to know the sort of, sort of malicious attacks that come at us. So we'll go for a break and we'll see you soon. Welcome back from that break. So now things are about to really get um, a bit more cooler and a bit more real, where we can understand um, the sort of attacks that we get and how we can protect ourselves. So like I said before we went on break, Pratap Jantua, he's an ethical hacker. Let me explain what an ethical hacker is, just so <laughs> for the average person to get. Um, so these are people that knows how to penetrate systems, but they don't use it to harm. So a regular hacker would, would get access to your information and use it to harm you, but an ethical hacker he plays with ethics. So he's, he's a good hacker, if I should say. <laughs> that can, what, what they do is that they get into things, they find out what, how weak your systems are, and they tell businesses, this is how you can tighten up your security, this is where you are going wrong, this is how you can um, make your phone a bit more secure for yourself. When you enter into places and network, you, op you see free Wi-Fi, uh, stuff like that. They, they are the ones that will tell you how to keep yourself safe on spaces like that. And so I have Pratap Jantua here to take us through um, how a regular person can keep themselves safe on the internet. Pratap. Yeah. A round of applause for Pratap. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? So guys, uh, we are going to discuss about uh, how we can uh, keep yourself safe, um, you know, so uh, we will be discuss in details. Also, I'll be showing the demonstrate. I mean, I will. I'm going to demonstrate you the full things. Okay, guys. So it will be hundred percent hands on. I mean, uh, you can see what is going on. So uh, first of all, we all are connected to network, isn't it? So network means uh, net means web, and work means something you are doing. So something when you are doing, so somebody else are recording it. What you are doing. Are you getting me? What is the benefit if they do like that? So that kind of job is called profiling. What exactly profiling does? Suppose the entire day you just open that Google Chrome and searching random stuff, isn't it? Like anything you are searching. So when you are searching something like let's say I am talking about this browser and I went through google.com and I am browsing anything, let's say, uh, let's say school or something which came the first, I have searched in scholar. So Google scholar something something it came right. So you see within a second, so this much result we have got, isn't it? So that means you are no more in your computer. When you open the browser, you are searching something, you are inside the Google search engine. Are you getting me? So anything we are searching, uh, like we people we like, uh, you know, we like to do online shopping and online things or everything we like online, isn't it? So that's why I will keep searching. So when you search all your data, they, somebody is monitoring and creating your profile based on that. So what kind of profile, like what kind of product you like, what kind of search you do. 
So that kind of cache they will be building and later on they will be using like whenever you will be opening any browser. So that kind of advertisement you are going to get and you will be attracted towards it, isn't it? So how we should uh, protect uh, from uh, that kind of stuff like if somebody is monitoring us. So for that you can do like uh, suppose you want to do secure search like whatever you are searching you do not want somebody else will be seen. So for that you can go like go duck duck go you see here. So go duck duck go if you go there and if you search the things see so it will be your 100 percent privacy. So other people will not be able to uh, you know track you easily like like the way the normally the google they do. So go duck duck go this is that one uh, you know see you search here. So you know nobody can find it out what you are searching have you seen it yeah like even you will not get any advertisement also let me show you let us say you can find out here um, GRA. So you see here uh, you know it will be coming without any advertisement. So anything without have you seen it in the right hand side there have no advertisement is not it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that sort of thing. Now let us say you can see here Ghana revenue authority and all those so they it is coming. So we want to see like uh, any website you are opening you need to know how long the website is like how long they are running. Because, because like you know some some uh, advertisement will be coming to your email or you know some link you know we are since 1970 and we are doing this business. So people when will be listening like you know something they find which is from long time they will be having a faith is not it. So we have to justify we have to check ourselves is that really the company is running from 1970 or not is not it. So how will be checking that one to check that one you can go archive dot org archive dot org. Now you can find out let us say any website random website you can take let us say NIIT Ghana dot com. We want to check how long they are operating in Ghana ok. So any website like anything like that so you can check it how long they are operating. Not only that I can check 10 years ago how the website was look like is that clear. So just hold on a moment. ok so uh, it is going to come ok you see here when they are operating since 2002 have you seen it. So then till 2019 now we want to see like let us say 2009 how the website was look like like in I click that 2009 and I will click it here. is a river that gives life to the stories of this cattle region. By the riverside, love blossoms and betrayal sails on. Two friends. He tastes like a brother and I promise you that nothing and no one can hurt him as long as I live. United until death. Brother, I'll see you. Take care of her, okay? Don't leave her side. But this woman Loyalty is my last name. will turn brother against brother. You've heard from Lena Maria? I haven't talked to her since I dropped her off at her house yesterday. Witness the story of three hearts entangled in a dangerous triangle. Lena Maria is the girlfriend of Pipe, and Pipe is your best friend. And the vengeance. What's going on with you two? I'm in love with her brother. River of Passions premieres on Tuesday 30th April at 6 p.m. on TV3. All the goals. The thrills aren't amazing skills. The records aren't extraordinary human feats. The grueling battles. Out of the human side. Sports Station, your complete sports show. Sports Station, shows Mondays at 9 p.m.
Brought to you by MTM. Everywhere you go. And Betway. Is uh, 2019. Have you seen it? Yes. So we have Pratap is still on here, and he's talking to us about um, how we can search safe things on the, how we can search and still be safe. Uh, how we would prevent certain ads from reaching us. So Pratap, you can let's go ahead with that. So guys, uh, check it here. In 2009, how it was look like, and 2019, how it looks like. <laughs> so that's what I was telling. Like before you search something, you will understand it. Uh, is that website is genuine or not? So um, you know, first we have seen that that website is there since 2002. Is that clear? Yeah. So next we are going like, is that website searching this website is genuine or not? If that any vulnerability is there or not? How we'll be checking? So we can go here. That is that website called Virus Total. So if you go to that virus total, so and after that, you can put it uh, the URL here. Let's say NIIT Ghana.com. So finding this website, see, no engine detected. I mean, uh, so there have all all the waves uh, like you know antiviruses are there. They are saying this website is clean. Have you seen it? Now we'll be finding what kind of website it is. So it's an educational institute. Have you seen it? So before searching anything, you'll be going there and you'll check it out whether is that a real source or not. Is that clear to you? Good. So now you can check it here, like you know what is that uh, IP they have and uh, what kind of URL they have, where where they are located. Everything you can find it out from here. Now how we'll be checking, like. If I if I if I find it like you know this this website is uh, somewhere which is somebody can do fishing on this isn't it mm -hmm. somebody can do fishing do you understand fishing yeah. fishing means if the website will be similarly look like this but actually it's not when you'll be clicking it will be taking all your information how it's going to take the I'm coming later I hope I'm not talking faster because uh, that is my intention i speak full day like you know 8 hours 10 hours so uh, you know i was excited when my turn will come up so that's what me <laughs> so uh, so uh, guys uh, like you know you i am going to show you that that kind of oh, why i'm taking you the url i could have run some tools like that sir said like you know some tools are there because all of us we don't have that tool in order to get tool you will be finding something you know vulnerable in your machine i don't want that so which is uh, available it, with the browser, I'm going to show you that. Is that fine? All right. So how we are not going to find out any uh, vulnerable website is there or not? So you go to that fish tank. So this is called fish tank. So you can find, you can go there and you can, you can put that URL and you can check it. You can see that list of that URL which is already vulnerable. So if you open it, some of your data can be breached. Okay. So let's say this is that one uh, website. If you go here, e that can happen something. See, it's oh, it's showing that you know Google dot test uh, uh, something something. It's showing it here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. If you copy this link, if you copy this link and you want to check whether this uh, website is genuine or not, if you put it here, and we can find right now like this website is having some issue. So we are checking with this. See, phishing. Have you seen it? So uh, not all of them have been, uh, you know, detected. Only couple of antivirus has been detected, isn't it? Not all of them. Now you might ask, why not all of them? Because that system, like you know, when any any attack or anything happen, manually we need to update that. So some dedicated people are there for this. They are called shock, S O C. Let me write for you. So one is for NOC, that is called Network Operation Center. What do you do? Any network problem, you will call up them, so they will be resolve the issue. Same like that, that is one department called SOC, Security Operation Center. So anything, you know, security breach or something, something happened, so they are not going to take care of that. So any vulnerability, any attack, anything, so regular basis, you have to update that. Is that clear? Right. So when will be, unless you update in your, in your uh, engine, you know, 
certificate engine that is called CA engine certificate engine. So, that cannot show it here that other antivirus is not showing only two is showing there is not it. Mm -hmm. So, once they will be updating then they, it will be detecting these other things. So, I have I have shown you a couple of terms like you know how we can find it. Now, how you will be uh, doing normal search like you know you go to that Google. Now, you can find it out here suppose I am searching something called uh, red rose done. So, immediately you can find out 2 billion uh, information you have got how much second 50 less than uh, you know 1 second is not it. Mm -hmm. So, what is our motive I am going to get like you know something picture which is red rose is not it. So, if you go and scroll down lot many uh, you know uh, infected URL can be there. So, how I have to be smart. So, you have act very smart how. So, what are the things I am going to look here? So, I am going to uh, type here file type what kind of file type? So, red rose type. file type and then we will go to here uh, red uh, rose and then I want jpg or p uh, like anything like any image format let us say jpg ok. Now, you end see how many result? only 252 is not it mm -hmm. and I have got only those sources which is having a jpg you open any of them. So, they will be having images nothing else is that clear. Suppose you are you are finding like that thousand of tricks are there. So, I can this in I just got 20 minutes I may not show you all is not it. So, that is the thing anyways now anything file or any documents I am going to find it out let us say anything about you know network security or cyber security how we will be finding out. So, that is in URL then you will be given colon and then you will be finding let us say cyber security then what kind of file I want PDF you can find it out only that PDF will be there see cyber security, cyber security, cyber security and all of them are in PDF. Otherwise, if you search like normal like let me show you the difference right now. So, so how much we have got 833 result in 0.27 second. Now, if I go to that normal uh, Google and type here cyber security. So, you can see it here thousands of results will be coming have you seen that? 53 million. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the difference? What exactly I need? I need that PDF that I will be starting is not it? Why I should go for so many document and then you will be distracted what exactly you are looking for? Maybe you know some of uh, the places you will be finding like you know you are searching, searching, searching and immediately you will find ok uh, which is not relevant to this, but something else you have got attracted towards it and that is all. So, that is the way people they, they make business and one advertisement there, there uh, people do that is called AdWords. So, advertisement is everywhere. So, this is the way you have to be smart in searching is that fine. Now, uh, this is the search and this is the security that I talk about. Now, next I will be come up let us say any website any normal website let us say uh, network red dot net suppose this is one website so this is the network red dot net this is that just one website now if you see it here that it is not secure it is saying it is it is not secure have you seen it. So, how we will be finding like you know it is secure or not it is secure means it can happen anything if you browse this website anything can happen is not it. So, how we will be finding whether it is secure or not. So, when you will be in the Google Chrome you type F 12. So, once you will be pressing F 12 in a browser now see what is going to happen here. Suppose, I am in this website I am pressing F 12 see immediately what came. So, certain uh, you know option came uh, you know element security network performance and something something and then security have you seen it. Now, you can check that view certificate 
So, this certificate you know you go to the details and then certification path. So, who is giving this certificate? Google that means it is a trusted mean you can trust this website is that fine. Let us say I go another random website any website name you can tell. Okay, uh, let us say let us say YouTube okay. <laughs> you said YouTube is not it. <laughs> now, now I will go to F 12. Now, I can check it here certificate and I go to the certificate path again it is Google product. Now, I will go for something a random website let us say, say 3 news 3 news dot com. Okay, three, which three one? News, 3 news dot com. 3 news dot com. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. So, 3news.com we are here. <laughs> so, it is a HTTPS that means it is secured. Have you seen it? This is the 3 news. We will check it uh, who is uh, uh, you know issuing the certificate here. We will go there and we will check certificate. Now, the certificate is valid from 2019 uh, to 26 you know this uh, you know this they have to renew again further. So, <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so, you can check it here guys uh, uh, 3 news.com you can check it here like who is giving the certificate 3 news.com. So, that means it is a genuine you can go here uh, there will be no vulnerability. So, let us check like is that really it is safe <laughs> going there. So, you will be going here and will be 3 news.com let it search oh it is clean it is 100 percent safe have you seen it. <laughs> so, give a clap man. <laughs> so, it is safe. Now, we want to find out what kind of website it is. So, it is uh, news and media. If you find it, that means everything is good. So, then you just uh, uh, you know go to this and take that URL and check it you know how long they are operating. Okay. So, you just go back. So, you can go back to here and you can check it like you can check it here. So, they are 1999 is that true? <laughs> I mean the so, domain has been there for a while. So, so uh, they are since 1999 and recently they have made a huge changes on their website uh, look wise and all those see they are having a maximum graph. Have you seen it? When they are having a maximum graph means they have made lot of changes. Whenever anything you are making changes somewhere in the place that is called international routing system they keep all that archive they keep and save somewhere. So, you can check it when when they in 2017 in which dates they have made changes. If you click all of them what all changes they have done that also you can see. Are you getting me? So, that is what the beauty of this. Now, uh, this is that URL uh, stuff how you can save and how you can find out the things that I have said. Now, I will be coming up you know your device how it is how much it is safe like because lot many uh, tool lot many uh, open tool is there online I can find it out in a minute like how many of you are using here internet and all those. So, then how you can make yourself safe. So, first of all you have to check like your firewall inbuilt firewall that is <coughs> sorry inbuilt firewall that is on or off. So, you go to here and type firewall dot cpl. So, once you will be going here you see the firewall is on. So, next what I am going to say uh, show you suppose uh, I am your friend I am came to your home and I have asked your laptop. So, you have given your laptop to me and I have seen that user here it is a Pratap. What I did I took the laptop and I went to that manage and what I did I changed the system password even I did not ask your password because in, in uh, windows they are having a vulnerability is there <coughs> even I do not know what is the old password, but still I can change. See let us say I do not know the current password right. So, let us say my name is Pratap here it is showing here is not it. So, you just right click on this and set password and proceed see new password and confirm. <laughs> what is this man? So, even you just my friend and I change your password set up some tool and accessing from my home 
and you can't do anything. He said, oh, I forgot password. You are trying, 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 trying. You are tired. <laughs> are you getting me? Even I will not change the password. I will, I, will, I will get to know what is the password and I will be uh, putting some tools and I will be accessing from my home. Even you do not know. Are you getting me? Some of the tools are like this. Let me let me just tell. I do not know. Uh, I am breaking the rules or not. I am okay. Go ahead. Okay, so that let us say one of the two like I am PC remote. Even your iPhone, that is also not safe. <laughs> so, uh, you can check it here. Let us say, you know, Apple, Linus, uh, Android, even Android. I just install that and I, I hide that icon or I change the icon or I put something, you know, in your move to some folder. You even don't know, I got that admin uh, access, I'm accessing your machine. Or even, even what you, with whom you are calling, I also can listen that. Are you getting me? Hmm. So, uh, you know, that's what, how you gonna make yourself very much secure. So, for that, if it is Windows machine that I have shown you, your friend have given you the laptop and you have changed everything. So, how you'll be making secure for this? So, for that, you'll be, you'll be going here, like, you will be going to run and then type there accpol dot msc. That means security policy. So, you will go run accpol dot msc. So, immediately it will be coming that security policy. So, you can make some policy you will be having a two factor authentication. If they want to change the password, it will be asking the old password or you will be you can make the complexity like it will be working the seven digit with this much. So, that combination only you know, somebody else do not know. So, they cannot change it. Am I clear to you? So, that is what it works. So, uh, that is the security policy. Okay, next I will be come up. Suppose, uh, you know, somebody uh, send you that Facebook request, is not it? So, how will be checking that, you know, the friend, he is a friend or he is a, you know, hackers just get inside your profile and exploit. Let us say you are very popular in Instagram. So, like you know 5000 follower you have, but they hackers they found okay this guy is very much popular. So, if I get inside his account, I can spread to all of our, uh, the uh, you know user there, is not it? Mm -hmm. So, how will be finding that guy is genuine or not? So, for that you can go to one website called Spokio. This is uh, called Spokio. This is the one website, and you can find out. You know, give his email ID. You can ask his email ID or profile name or whatever, phone number, social whatever. Let's say I'm giving my. So I'm putting mine, and after that, even it will be showing you. See profile, uh, social network, online phone number, like you know, top online dating website. Okay, so even you can yarn to yarn to work on somebody. So you will get it all the information from there. So you just have a look here. Have you seen it? So like, uh, what are the website? Uh, so seven social network website, twenty-four photos. And this is the password. If you pay, they are going to show all more on non details. <laughs> <laughs> are you getting me? So, that is what you know before putting your email ID, your name, just think twice like what email ID, which email ID you are using for official, never use that ID or you know never use that phone for that things. Because you know, I am not telling like you, you might be thinking, I do not have any money or something, you know, how, what they will be doing they will be exploit you, they will be using your ID and will be hacking somebody. So, the crime branch will be coming and holding you and you can prove okay. yourself that you have so not done. What will happen is that? Are you getting me? So, that is the thing. Another one is called uh, like PIPL, people search. So, this is also another website. Over there, you can put that email ID or location or, or username, you can find out the details. You can see that so many people over here, so they are they are so, searching. So what, what will happen? What's about to happen is that um, we will we're about to end on TV, 
but we are still here. We'll be taking questions and answers, so um, relax. When we end on TV, we are still here. We are continuing. Okay. So, so go ahead. Okay. So guys, uh, you have seen it now? Okay. So now, like you might be thinking, yeah, I'm browsing from my laptop, my computer, how they will get to know? Now, this browser is not belong to you. It belongs to whom? Google Chrome, is it, isn't it? It's a Google property. So if you go to the settings, uh, and you can put that, you can type here password. See all the password by default saved here. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Even I, you didn't put intentionally, automatically is there. You just click it, it will be showing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you getting me? So that's why, have you seen it? Whatever I have searched, whatever, everything, whatever related to password, all of them are showing up there. <laughs> Is that fine? Now, how will be, how will be protecting your machine? Like, you know, anything changes happen or not. So whatever you do from the morning to evening, system also keep record, whatever you are doing since morning to evening. So in order to know that, you go to run and type there, event. So even go, you'll go there. You can check it out here. Let's say Windows logs application. What all application you are running since morning? So it's going to show you here. So then you'll be confirmed. Okay, I'm the guy. I have used this all things. Somebody else didn't use it. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. Now any security related stuff, <coughs> you can see this. This is the application. I have used so far. Now let's say some of the error message is showing. You want to check what is the errors all about. So you'll double click on this. So this is the, my computer name, which is Juniper. And you can check it here that uh, what is the event ID, wh what time it's occurred, that also showing it here. Is that fine? So anytime you are thinking like your system is suspicious or something, so you go to here and analysis yourself, okay, that time I didn't use. So let's see. and then you can <clears throat> find it out what is the issue. Is that fine, guys? Yeah. All of you? Yeah. Good. So this is that uh, one thing like, you know, you can check it out, your system is safe or not. Okay, next uh, we'll be coming to that. So uh, this is clear to you now? Yeah. Okay, so now like, suppose, Okay, you know, suppose like you have found like somebody is tracing your IP or maybe, uh, you know, something is happening to your machine. So you go to this, this called Netcraft. This is that Netcraft, okay. The website is called Netcraft. So what you can find it here, let us say, uh, what was the name of this? Three news, right? So you go here and go to the netcraft and put it and you can search it. So it will be telling what, where is the location of this, actually this, this company or this uh, organization where exactly they locate at. Is that fine? Mm -hmm. So wait for a minute, uh, immediately they will be finding it out. So toolwar.netcraft, so it will be come up, just wait a minute. So uh, it's showing all the details. Yeah. Have you seen it? Netcraft. So they have hosted with US yeah. website. So this is their uh, DNS information. And this is that uh, their entire information. So there is no risk, okay. isn't it? Mi uh, very minimal. There are no risk. That means safely you can go to the website. Have you seen it, guys? So I told you they are using certain certificate. So you can check it. This is the certificate encryption key. So they are also, uh, you know, having that Google uh, certificate. So that is also signature verification success. Means freely you can access this browser. Is that fine? Freely you can access this uh, uh, particular website. Now you can check it here. You can go to this website that is called ping.eu. 
ping dot e u and you can you can check it what is my ip this is that current location of my ip this is the public ip that i have traced out is that clear mm -hmm. ping dot a u so now i want to find it out who is now i will give that ip or the host name i have given here three news so it will be finding the details you want full info you can go here ec gc you can find it out the full information have you seen it which exact where exactly location you can see that registered on enorm llc uh, you know they are having how many dns server all the details have you seen it where it is located and everything 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 okay clear guys now you can go to that another website called what is myip.com so uh, you can use this one so uh, you will be 100% safe see what is the location right now akra ghana have you seen it so the, we are using surf line communication that is the internet you are using right yes see <laughs> is that clear guys so when whenever you are going uh, to use something so everything you can find out without using any tools because most of the tool that i'm going to tell you the name but it actually it is paid so i don't want that you to buy something which when something you can do over online is that clear guys right so even though if you buy the tool then you have to know very well like how to operate the tool even i have plenty of tools i can demonstrate one of them so if they permits um 5 minutes okay so 5 minutes uh, you know i'm going to show you something like i have okay one more thing like you know wifi that sir was saying like wifi when you are going to use somewhere it's not so safe uh, is that uh, port is that visible to you guys okay so actually i'm running over there one command called uh, let me copy that net sh wlan show all that is the command i'm going to show you actually i will copy this one in notepad even so guys uh, this is the command i am i'm going to show you so if you see this net sh wlan show all so if you give this command in your command prompt it will be showing you with who who are the people you have connected uh, you know wifi is that fine so like you know let's say over here i have came here in uh, you know uh, 3 tv and then let's say i went to some other place i also connected there isn't it mm -hmm. so like you know you can check it out like this computer is connected with uh, you know what all uh, wifi see all that wifi list with password it is showing actually so you can't see this i will take you the graphically let's say somebody some of your friend have given you wifi access but he took your phone and put the password password but he is not telling you you are offended oh you are my friend and you are not giving me <laughs> why <laughs> so now you, you know you you play a little bit smart you go to that this space and go here go to the wireless properties click on security and show the password <laughs> okay so uh, it's fine so you also didn't uh, interrupt him and you also get to know about it is that fine all right okay so now uh, earlier i have given one command called secpol.msc that is the security policy <laughs> so guys you can check it here account policy can you see it then password policy you can go here the password policy so once you will be going to the password policy you can find out minimum password age maximum password age enforce history history means how long who are the people have changed the password so you can check that history here I mean you can configure that way so what will be the password uh, age I mean after certain days automatically password will expire and it will be asking you to change that also date you can set it here then minimum password length you know you can give that password how long you are going to keep let's say you have given that 25 digit if somebody trying to put the password less than that 
even you can't set it the password. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So this is the way you can make your machine, uh, you know, more safe, secure, and protective. Yeah. Now next, I'm going to use some of the tools. Like you know, um, first uh, let me give the name of the tools that that, that you can run. One of the tool is called Nessus, N E S S U S. So uh, basically, these are the tool people use for enterprise company, big big company over there. Every day, thousand of attacks is happening. Is that clear? So over there, if you go and check in Google what is Nessus, you'll get to know. Because just running out the time, that's why I'm not able to show you, uh, you know, many things. So this is the Nessus. You can check it here. Vulnerability scanner. Anything wrong is happening in your uh, company. Even the server saying some of the, uh, you know, let's say you have buy your phone just because you want to save money, and that's why you have bought something, you know, local phone. But I don't want to tell the name. So maybe you have got something in a local phone, and after that, next day you find like you know somebody is calling. Hey, okay, you know, from the bank yesterday, five thousand dollars has been transferred from your account. He said, oh, yesterday I got a phone, but I didn't transfer any amount. But he just installed that application and immediately it got compromised. So how? Because let's say that's what in a big, big organization, why they give the laptop to their employee? Because they have installed, pre-installed, these are the stuff, at least like you know, when you'll be come up with the machine, it will be safe. Because from that machine, you will be getting in their database, in their you know, system, so in, in, it will not be any infection there. Is that fine? So that's why this is the one tool you can use that is called Nasus. Even it will be free version out there. If you people are interested, you can create the virtual machine and you can run it and you can make safe yourself. Even you guide your friend. So that also this way, you know, sharing is caring. You in your knowledge, you'll be shared by your friend. He's, you know, secured his circle. Like that, you know, you, you create a group, WhatsApp group, or you create a, you know, Facebook group, or you can create a YouTube channel and you can uh, you know speak about it so your friends will be knowing rather you know finding something sata wale and all those things you know you can spend some good time learning something new so you know that will be productive is that clear guys so uh, then next will be uh, going that is called multego this is another tool called multego i will be and uh, giving you the name also you can check it here this is the tool, oh, okay. So uh, they're having a one firewall in this, the soft line you are using, they're having a firewall. So they, they are checking whether, see, have you seen the Multego? This is that Multego tool, you can download and you can find it out. Have you seen it? Multego, so you can find it out who are using Kaspersky also using their, them. So uh, this is very, very secured. You can check it out. Anybody have done anything to your laptop or anything, you can check it out. Enter history, you can find out about your system. Is that fine? So uh, then round I got. Up. Let's round up on that. We should end? Let's round up. OK. And then we'll take questions. OK, OK. I know fine. you guys have questions to ask, right? Yeah. Right. So we want to round up with um, Pratap. Okay. And then we can take um, your questions now. So if you have a question, just put your hand up, and then we'll, we'll give you a microphone, and then you can ask um, your question. OK, Mr. Francis Du has a good hand. Chief, you have to turn on the microphone. Sorry. Uh, thank you. I, I want to find out, I think uh, what the current convention is, is to uh, back up data on the cloud. Um, looks like that's where everybody you know, is going to. So servers, are, you know, fiscal servers are becoming a bit obsolete now. Now, the question is how safe are we, especially with the current you know, status of storing information on the cloud. Okay. Um, v, you want to talk, talk to that? Thank you. Okay. So, yes, digitalization is making everybody uh, kind of finding ways to, uh, uh, you know, send data to places probably they can easily um, access. 
So um, the time you can take probably to order your server or your storage, uh, to the time probably is configured to serve the purpose. You realize that there is a similar service available elsewhere, which can host um, your data. Honestly speaking, it is safer if you can host your own data. But because of the growth of the data, probably that you cannot control. Because it is cheaper in the cloud, and other reasons, you probably want to go there. But when you are going there, what is most important is to study the data protection uh, law very well. Because there is something about the collector, there is something about the processor. And you need to be able to ensure that, yes, the one processing your data has enough control in place as far as security with respect to privacy and uh, you know, uh, reasons are concerned. Mm -hmm. So if you just said, oh, this service is in the cloud, I'm connecting, and uh, let me have my, and you have not gone through probably the legal process to have this in place, you are making yourself vulnerable. And remember, if data protection gets you know or something happens, it is not the one hosting your data that will be held responsible. You are the primary person that will be held responsible. And if you are able to put in probably good contract, that is when you may pass on that liability to him. So yes, we need to probably explore the variables. If it is OK uh, for you to send your data out there, why not? The law does not restrict us as to where we have to process our data. Thank okay. you. Um, my question? Um, yes, um, Pratap wants to add. So uh, guys, uh, when the cloud is the concern, so first of all, let me tell you what is the cloud. So cloud means you are keeping your information on somebody else's computer, mm -hmm. like you know the way it is. Just you are connected with the network. So now, like you know, uh, that cloud will be having a various types. Like you know, that is IaaS infra uh, infrastructure as a service, PaaS platform as a service, and software as a service. Suppose you having application you want to run from somebody else computer because you don't have enough resource, then you can choose that one. When you are talking about only data, that data could be any type, isn't it? That could be your email backup, that could be your normal video editing data or something. Like when you are going to keep the data, so that time you need to know like you know what will be the volume of it. Because like you know more you keep the data, the processor will be using more and you know your RAM will be using more that whatever the contract probably you have signed with them, let's say you know, uh, let's say 5,000 USD per month, but due to huge data, so that it is taking time, so that time that you know extra you know charges can be there. So you know you might tell them, you can might fight with them, oh this is the hidden charges, you didn't told that this is our subscription, but actually it's not. So that, that's what you need to know before it, like what kind of things is there, you have to know all that benefits. So the benefit is like, you know, you no need to buy the infrastructure, like, you know, to save the data, it will be 100% secure and safe. But the problem is like, you know, the charges, it could be very, very high. Yes. Okay. okay. Right. My question has to do with, um, what happens if after using your laptop, you use a browser and then you delete the whole history? And then the next one is, when somebody does a uh, defamation story about you, okay, um, and they are not ready to pull it down, okay, how can you influence it being pulled down? Okay. Then the so last one. Okay. <laughs> so first of all, let me tell you, when you are, you are browsing anything, so everything is storing certain place, and that is called SAM. This is the SAM. SAM means security account manager. All your password, all your information, everything is getting stored there by default. So like if you in order to secure that one, so you have to have that Windows paid version, like not like patch or something, something, <laughs> or you should not install XYZ tool, like you should not use XYZ stuff. So that can compromise your SAM file. So what you have to do, like you can clear the browser, but you, have, you, can, you can use this kind of tool like called pass view. Pass view. So if you check that pass view, I mean it will be showing you your, your password. Is that visible or not? If it is visible, then you clean again. 
or then you can go to run type there C L E A N M G R that is called let me write in the notepad. So, you will be going to run and type here C L E A N M G R. So, it is clean manager most of the stuff it will be removed from there. So, then you could uh, tell yourself yes 20 percent you are safe 20 percent <laughs> yes. So, if you want to go for 100 percent security, so you have to use that some telemetry that is called endpoint protection. So, that if you have, so then you can configure with your firewall every 30 seconds it will be shrinking and it will be making everything clean. Yes. So, and then the next one was if somebody writes a story about you, yes. you need to pull it down. Yeah, they can get it till the time you have the same MAC address in your computer. If you have the same MAC address, if you go to run, and type their command get mac. Let us say you have used this computer and then you sell it to somebody. I can I can find out who was the user before, what email they have using because you have seen everything is registering somewhere, is not it? So, I can find it out. So, that is what you have to either scrap it if it is security reason, otherwise do not give to anybody. Which is the safest browser? My last question. Safest browser? Uh, browser is not safe unless you purchase uh, some of that tool like like you know uh, you know you have free tool like you know can you check it here one is avira browser safety so you can uh, you know get that one so it will be you can go there manually and you can clean all the history mm. so that will be 40% to 50% safe it will be <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, as I told you, see, you know how many people are working for good cause. I uh, you know ten times more than that people are looking for how to take, uh, you know, e how to get the easy money. You know, easy money is very difficult stuff. If you get to know how to make money without doing anything, suppose one of the hackers called Kevin Metnick. Do you heard about him? Let me yeah. show him. So his per day revenue may be one million. So, this che uh, Kevin Metnick actually he, he is that world class hacker. Have you seen it? Yep. He, many times he was wanted. Now, what he did, he will be, let us say, I having one company. So, he will be sending me one email. They are saying that, you know, your company is not 100 percent safe. Do you want me to come there and make it, uh, you know, show you what are the problems you have? He will be showing this, this problem, and for the two days, he will be charging 2 million. <laughs> or maybe even more because based on that company. So, that is what this is called auditing, network auditing, auditing or security auditing. For that plenty of courses are available, uh, you know, online or if you ever can do it, that is called CISSP, then GISA, then you can do CISA, CISA, then you can do uh, another one, the best one, that uh, that it's actually it is from ISC square. Uh, then that is another one. I should not say it here. So uh, mm -hmm. you know that actually called WASP. O S W A P. Let, let me show you here. O S W A P. WASP. Okay. okay. So, uh, over here you can find out top 10 vulnerability website and all those. So, they are having also a certain certification. So, you can do it, you will get to know about it. But I do not think so, you need any uh, anything that you know, you can do the self search right now, give that online exam. You can give the free online exam called White Hat Hacker. So, uh, these are the content are uh, free. I told, I have shown you how to find out the document with the help of, you know, commands and all. So, this way you can go through it and small, small projects you can work on it. You can create some channels, many people will come and comment on that. So, you, when you will be working on it, you will be very good in this. Okay. So, let, when let that. Can we take the other, the other Yes, questions? yes, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Yes. So, Victor, you made a point that some of our systems that we use are not supported by encryption. And if you also mentioned that um, they are the regulators regulating some of the things that ISPs provide for us. And you also said that if you are to implement everything they let you do, some sector of the market will not be able to use the system they are using. 
mainly because of maybe profit that the ISPs are getting from us. So my question is, what are the regulators doing with the ISPs to ensure that we, the end users, are safe with respect to the, what the two of you just said? Okay, thank you. I think you are just uh, repeating the same question that I asked <laughs> during the presentation. So the, the operator um, is making huge investment uh, as far as security and privacy is concerned. Um, for the sake of privacy, and the fact is that, that this data is not yet out. Mm -hmm. From 2015 to uh, 2019, in 2019 alone, a particular operator is going to spend about 60% of the total budget from 2015 to date. What this means is that the operator is interested in securing um, you as an end user. But the challenge is, if that encryption or protection mechanism is put in place, you are denied service. Quality service. Mm -hmm. You are denied service. In other words, you will not be able to make call. Your phone will not be able to attach to the service to enable you to do what you want to do. <laughs> this is the, the problem. Now, if the regulator, for instance, say, going forward, I want you to put this in place. The law, again, balancing it with the current law, again, you must make the service available. So where, how do we strike the balance? What this means is that all stakeholders must come together again and look at this. What is in our interest? Is our interest uh, being security, I mean, security being the top mm -hmm. uh, requirement if yes, access. can we deny all other people access to the service? <laughs> so this is a, uh, the, uh, where we find ourselves until we are able to find answers to this. And I said, the way out, for instance, is for, I'm not sure in a way, I think it's the standard board that is responsible for you know, checking the quality of uh, uh, how do you call mobile phones that we bring in. I'm not sure in a way. If, it is the, if, that is the, the, if that body is the one responsible, mm -hmm. then they must make sure that to a large extent, such you know, devices do not come to the market. For instance, if you buy a device and you are not able to connect to any of the uh, service providers, you will quickly run back to the, the seller and say, I'm sorry, uh, the device that I bought is not connecting. And he has to change it for you. OK, but if you are on the regulator side, are you? able to side with Victor on the things that he's talking about. Um, thank you very much. With what Victor just um, submitted, it's a balance that we need to actually achieve. The fact that we want the service and the fact that it needs to be quality service is what we need to achieve. Mm -hmm. So the stakeholder engagement is mostly the, uh, the goal to the, or the what we need to drive to it. Because mm. we need to get what the operators and what we also, the, st the customer or the normal um, user wants to get at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So both of us need to agree and sit down and say, what do I need? The operator needs to also get his revenue. Also, they also one of the achievements is also uh, maximizing their revenue. Right. The operator needs to be served, or the, the customer needs to be served with maximum quality. We right. also need to make sure that the rules and regulation that we've already set down is actually achieved. So there needs to be a strike of balance that we need to achieve at the end I of the see. day. Great so stuff. Take okay. Order. Um, probably. Okay. Uh, uh, before you. before your question, so we will be rounding up at 4:30 um, for TV. There are a lot of questions. I see a lot of people's hands are up. Um, so at fourth, I hope you make your question short, and then the answer will be short, and then we can round up for TV, and then we can continue asking questions. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, my question goes to Sir. Uh, at 843, that's the Data Protection Act, um, data controllers are supposed to inform data subjects before, I mean, seek their consent before they share their details with third parties. Mm -hmm. But we realize that, I mean, all of us can attest to that we receive unsolicited text messages mm -hmm. from people we've never shared our contact with, and basically from all the telcos. And uh, you, you keep on, the industry players keep on, I mean, refuting this, uh, I mean, they try to go away with it. And I, I even had um, Mr. Ken Ashibe, I think about a, a month or so ago, denying this. What's really happening? on the ground, let us know, sir. 
agreed to it. <laughs> Thank he you. Has agreed to it. Um, uh, that is why I say probably we don't read enough. Again, mm -hmm. I am not the right person to speak to this. <laughs> but being uh, somebody who is in the environment, probably a little knowledge I can share. If you are subscribing to the service, all that we need is fast, 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 fast. Let me get the service. Do we really take time to go through what we call the end user agreement? This is, if you ask me, this is the reason why we find ourselves in some of these situations. But, but ordinarily, a telco provi a a service provider will not share, uh, how do you call it, your data with a third party if that concern is not there. Already, you might have subscribed to this without knowing it or without knowing. Do you have any idea on what they are talking about? But like uh, Data Protection Act. Right. So uh, every country, like any any uh, continent or any uh, bo body, body in the sense, let's say, uh, if you talk about um, internet or something, so they're having a body called IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force. So they also having certain rule and regulations. So you are not supposed to make some changes and all those. Secondly, like you know, every country they also having their rule. Uh, after that, each and every uh, organization they should do audit. That is called ISO audit. They will be some team will be coming and checking like you know everything is fine or not. If they go through all those procedures, so the the query you have you should not come up. Uh, because they will be checking whether whatever the information has been exposed, so they will be working on it, and they will be removed from that their cache. So this kind, this kind of thing should not be come up. Right. Yes. Yeah. If you have, go ahead. Um, I also want to like to ask you a question. What kind of is it advertisements you are getting or the telcos? Because if you are actually giving your number to someone or an institution, obviously they send you advertisement. But for a random. I don't say coming to you. I don't think. I mean, I'm willing to. I mean, see the question right because it has to be the fact. Pardon? <laughs> it has to be the fact that either the terms of reference you didn't read it to the, to understand that your your information will be shared to a certain extent, or the fact that you probably shared your <laughs> uh, I mean information to someone else which you might not yeah, know, okay. because that law is there to say that the data. Um, um, Controller okay. needs to tell you what is using your information for. That is actually okay. said, so, so it's fine. I think, um, I think, I think one, one of the one of the issues with um, how people send you SMS that you are not aware of is, for instance, there's an event that happens and yes. you go there and, and you give them your information, information, your phone number, you register and give them details. Oh, what they sure. do is that so there's a, there's a data scientist who can, based on the information you've given them, profile you and say. Um, you are this age, you are this person, you spend this amount of money, you go here and there and there and there. And because of that, if, for instance, if you, are, if you are somebody that's loaded with money, if a car company wants to s send adverts to somebody that can, is within their purchase, um, you have the purchase ability to buy a car, then they would go to which, yeah, whichever obvious. institution has your data or your profile set up over there for you. And then they would give them your data and they would send you an advert. You understand. So it's not sometimes it's not necessarily the telcos, telcos. that give access. It is you because you've been into certain spaces. Yeah, giving out information. Right. Um, so we we, <laughs> we 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 want to round up um, on TV um, for now. But it, it's been amazing um, having you guys watch us at home on MD Tech Fest. While it is getting sweeter, we have to cut you off. But it's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much from us at MG. Uh, Media General and TV3 um, for staying tuned and watching all this while from 2 um, till now. Um, the next Tech Fest will be coming up, but you can keep on sending us your questions on social media with the hashtag MGTechFest, MGTechFest. And you can also visit mgtechfest.com slash survey. What we want you to do is, there's a, there's a survey, there's a form that we want you to fill. Please fill the form and give us feedback on this event and then we can go ahead with that. Thank you very much for watching us at home, but those of us in the auditorium, extra questions. <laughs>